It is unavoidable. We will witness. Hi everyone, this is Ludwig Kitzman for Games Radar Plus, and I'm joined by fellow Star Wars aficionado Anthony John Agnello. Live long and prosper, everybody. Grr! Okay, I'm going to ignore that. Today, we are counting down our newly revamped list of the 10 best Star Wars games ever made. There have been as many Star Wars games as there are characters played by Warwick Davis in George Lucas's movies. And while many have been good, these 10 are the best. At number 10, we've got, well, we've got three games, so we're cheating apparently by including the entire Super Star Wars trilogy for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. These, I think, are fondly remembered for their gorgeous pixel graphics. Uh, though much like other film adaptations of the time, they kind of double down on the action to the point where most of the Star Wars characters are destroying pretty much everything in the galaxy, which is fun. Uh, funny thing is, Luke never seems to be as perturbed by killing scores of sand people as his dad was. The other funny thing is that you can now play Super Star Wars without a Super Nintendo. It was just re-released on PlayStation 4 and Vita. At number 9, we have the original adventures of everyone's favorite bastard Jedi, Kyle Katarn, in Star Wars Dark Forces. What initially looked like a cheesy Doom ripoff back in the mid-90s turned out to be a legitimately forward-thinking shooter, with an appropriately pulpy story and truly three-dimensional level design that let you freely look around your environment. Kyle never picked up a lightsaber in the original, but the shooting was perfect on its own. The platforming left something to be desired. Why is there always platforming? I suppose, though, this did prove that a bloster is not all that clumsy and uncivilized when it's in a decent first-person shooter. Uh, now next up at number 8 we've got Star Wars TIE Fighter, which is the first time that we ventured into the ships of Star Wars, but with a more simulated approach. Yes, there was a time way back in PC gaming where we all thought that flight combat simulators were the best thing ever. And so to do that in a Star Wars ship, and even from the Imperial side of things, felt like this brilliant and new way to get involved in the war between the Empire and the Rebellion. This uh, could not have been less of the expected cash-in that you would think would come from a Star Wars game. Um, this one also set the stage for follow-up games like X-Wing Alliance, which recreated things like the Battle of Endor. TIE Fighter was also made during a time when all of the TIE Fighter pilots weren't all the exact same dude from New Zealand, so you weren't thinking the entire time that I would rather just be playing as Boba Fett. Uh, the seventh in our list is also the newest Star Wars game out, DICE's Star Wars Battlefront. It brought the massive online sh shooting series back after a decade away, and while it might outwardly seem spare and simple compared to its predecessors, it actually shines thanks to that clarity. Super swift, easy to pick up game types like Droid Run and Walker Assault both perfectly capture the planet side battle scenes from the classic movies, and they make for a bre an almost breezy competitive shooter compared to modern day competition like DICE's own Battlefield. Plus, you can chase Ewoks. Who doesn't want to do that? At number six, Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. No other Star Wars game in the entire 35 year history of the production lets you play with as many characters from the movies as Traveler's Tales original LEGO games do. You can mix and match all of your favorite obscure characters, and you can, like me, impress people with your knowledge of who Salacious Crumb is. And this one is really good to play with kids or people who are more interested in Star Wars than they may be in video games. Plus, you literally fall to pieces while your partner has delusions of grandeur. Bonus! All of Luke and Anakin's whining is replaced with charming grunts. Uh, Star Wars Republic Commando falls smack dab into the middle of our countdown, and it's a fascinating companion piece to Dark Forces. Republic Commando was also a shooter representative of the era when it was made. Uh, it had a distinctive campaign that paired you with AI partners, and it actually made the clone troopers who you play as in the game uh, from the prequel trilogy more interesting than the actual movies did and well before the Clone Wars cartoon started to flesh out those sand and, troopers. And so far it's really interesting to see just how few Star Wars games cost you as the heroes from the film, which just seems like the obvious choice. 
We go back even further in Star Wars history with our number four pick, Star Wars The Old Republic, pronounced Swator. Notoriously expensive and inescapably huge, this was going to be the follow-up to Bioware's Knights of the Old Republic on a scale befitting a game that was meant to compete with things like World of Warcraft. And while it was a massively multiplayer whatever, longtime players discovered that Bioware had essentially made a huge stack of epic, well-written Star Wars stories to play through. Uh, this game also became better as time went by, as most MMOs do, to the point where you can almost play it as a huge single-player Star Wars quest now from the makers of Mass Effect and Dragon Age. Luckily, it didn't just end up with one million people all playing as HK-47 with a lightsaber, as tempting as that might have been. Number three actually brings Kyle Katarn back into the fold, and this time it is both personal and all force-powered up, as opposed to in Dark Forces. This is Star Wars Jedi Outcast. I'm gonna stop you there. This game is basically really Star Wars Dark Forces 3, Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast. Just thought you should know. <sighs> Jedi Outcast was as convoluted and thick with backstory as most late era Star Wars extended universe fiction was, but that didn't really matter when it was also the ultimate stormtrooper killing simulation. Building on all of the excellent acrobatic combat of its predecessors, Outcast's best feature was its wild lightsaber duels. It was the last great hurrah where you also got to play as Kyle Katarn at the peak of his prowess. Okay, okay, that's enough time on foot. We need to get back into space and blow up some Death Stars. Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2 Rogue Leader belongs at number 2 because it, like Star Wars Battlefront, is so easy to jump into and participate in fantastic recreations of both our favorite battles from the movies and original battles that you would totally believe happened in other parts of the galaxy when you weren't looking. You get to do the Death Star trench run, you do a raid on Cloud City in the horrifyingly flimsy A-Wing, and you do all of this while worrying about how many lives you have left. Remember those? Lives? Yeah, and Wedge Antilles is constantly telling you to do stuff. For real, Wedge Antilles. Not an imitator. Finally, number one, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Thirteen years after its release, there's still an argument to be made that this is Bioware's very best work. While the story of your amnesiac force adept feels like it's going through the Star Wars motions, there's a handsome pilot, a frogman who teaches you to be a Jedi, an evil Sith Lord with a funky robot jaw, it made it all feel very personal. This was your journey. The studio's signature morality system was also uniquely suited to George Lucas's universe. That struggle between good and evil is fundamental in Star Wars, so your binary choices between the two felt truly tied to the material. Its hybrid D&D-ish combat also perfectly translated lightsaber on vibroblade action into an RPG. And who could forget that game's incredible twist that Luke was Spock's father all along? No! Please, please come back to Games Radar for more Star Wars, Battlefront, The Force Awakens, and even some video games that aren't Star Wars. 